Welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast, your home for weekly information and inspiration to help you get the graduate job of your dreams. Hello, my name is James Curran and welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast. The Graduate Job Podcast is your weekly home for all things related to helping you on your journey to finding that amazing job. Each week I bring together the best minds in the industry, speaking to leading authors, entrepreneurs, coaches and bloggers who bring decades of experience into a bite-sized weekly 30-minute show. Put simply, this is a show I wish I had a decade ago when I graduated. We focus down again for episode 32, which is the second of our two-part specials on graduate jobs in social work, as I speak to Ivan Wise, Recruitment Director at Think Ahead. We delve into Think Ahead and its groundbreaking 26-month graduate social work programme, examining what exactly it is, how you apply, and how you can stand out from the crowd. We discuss the application process in detail, and also cover why you should think about Think Ahead as your fast track into a career in mental health social work. Now, if you've ever thought about a career in social work, then this is an episode you won't want to miss. As always, links to all we discuss and a full transcript are available in the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash thinkahead. Now, this episode came about after a request from a listener. So if you have any particular people or industries you'd like me to speak to on future shows, drop me a mail at hello at graduatejobpodcast.com. But let's not dilly-dally about and hop straight across to episode 32. Really pleased today to be speaking to Ivan Wise. Ivan is the Recruitment Director at Think Ahead. Think Ahead is a new program which is looking to recruit high potential graduates and career changers into mental health social work here in the UK. Ivan, welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast. Hello, nice to talk to you. So to kick us off, would you like to give us an introduction to Think Ahead and describe to our listeners what the scheme is and how it works? Think Ahead is a brand new program. Uh, Its aim is a new route into social work, in particular mental health social work. Uh, It's opening for applications around now. It's uh, for the first ever time going to be starting a program in the summer of next year, July 2016, where we're going to have our first cohort of mental health social workers undertake a two-year program. Other schemes uh, of a fast-track nature have existed before, but it's the first time uh, there's been one in this field of mental health social work. And I was um, reading on your website just uh, some of the stats around uh, mental health illness generally, and yeah, it was really surprising just how prevalent it is. I mean, 40% of ill health um, caused by mental health issues, one in four adults have mental health issues, 20% of police time spent dealing with mental health issues, so it's you know it's a massive um, Massive issue out there. Exactly. The the, the background to the establishment of Think Ahead was a a growing awareness that not only was uh, mental health a dramatically increasing issue that affects this country, but also that the awareness of it as an issue was increasing as well. So a couple of years ago, the Department of Health uh, looked into the idea of potentially starting a new fast track scheme within within an area of adult health care. So they commissioned the Institute of Public Policy Research, a think tank, to look at whether a, a new fast track scheme uh, along the lines of other schemes, a new routine might work within uh, adult social care. And the think tank, the IPPR, looked into it and they alighted on the issue of uh, adult mental health social work as being the one most suited to a new fast track scheme within this context of growing uh, demand for support from uh, people suffering from mental ill health and also a recognition that it wasn't seen as a profession that graduates regarded as prestigious or having high status. So lots of research was done, which found that lots of people in their final year at university or shortly after graduating were not considering it. They were not seeing it as something that they had any uh, likelihood of applying to. Uh, The statistics showed that very few of the really highest achievers from university were going on studying this in a postgraduate capacity. So the idea was, is it possible to uh, package a new scheme whereby people who have outstanding communication skills Uh, analysis, legal skills, research skills, empathy, relationship building, all those sorts of things, how could they be attracted to coming into mental health social work? And the research the IPPR did um, led to the formation of Think Ahead, the organization last year, with a very specific ambition, which is to increase the supply of really outstanding graduates uh, who go into mental health social work as a career. How many graduates are you looking to recruit this year? So we're, we're looking for between 80 and 100 people who will start uh, in July 2016. 
and uh, they are both a mixture of brand new graduates, so we expect some of those people to be straight out of their undergraduate, um, but other people will come from uh, a different careers, career changes uh, of different ages. So the qualification is that they'll need to have an undergraduate degree, but we're expecting it to be up towards 100 people who will be starting next summer. And in terms of that graduate degree, um, uh, is there any specifications around the type of degree? Are you open to uh, a broad range of subjects? Well, we are open to a broad range of subjects. The, the people who undertake the Think Ahead program are participants of our first cohort, other than having not done social work before, uh, because obviously it's a social work training program. Uh, it's open to anybody from any undergraduate uh, discipline, so it's open to any degree structure. The aim of the program is to really reach out and get some of those outstanding people out there who've got those range of skills and attributes that we're looking for, but may have studied something very different. Now, inevitably, there are certain degrees with a level of crossover, and our early indications are that people who've studied psychology are particularly interested in Think Ahead as a, as a, as a career option for them, but we are certainly open to people who've studied any subject at undergraduate level. So thinking ahead then, say if I applied and I was successful, come around to July 2016, what would I actually be doing? It's a very structured program. It's, it, it's certainly clearly uh, influenced by some of the other big fast track schemes that are now out there. The aim is it's, it's a 26 month program, so just over two years. When people start July 2016, they'll begin with a residential summer institute. And the idea of that is it's initially uh, a grounding in all the key elements of mental health social work that they will need to undertake the program. So it's a six week residential that is, takes place in Leeds that all our um, first cohort will undertake together. The academic teaching will be done by the University of York. So a series of, uh, of their lecturers will be undertaking modules in uh, aspects of an introductory aspect of mental health social work over those six weeks. And then uh, after a break at the beginning of September next year, 2016, all our different participants will then be assigned to a local authority or NHS mental health trust uh, that we're working with over the program. So they'll be working in a number of different regions around England, and they'll be working within that trust over two years. So the crucial aspect is they'll be working within a, within a group or cohort of four people. So of that initial group that start over the six weeks in Leeds next summer, each of them will then go into groups of at least four, and they'll spend two years in that group of four. Um, so they'll get to learn from each other and undertake a lot of the teaching and uh, placements they'll be doing together. Over the two years, they'll be spending lots and lots of time on placement. So the, the aim of the Think Ahead program, like many of the other fast track schemes, is rather than teaching people all the theory, and then two years later or three years later, they then go and actually do some practice, the idea that it's blended together. So over the, over the period of the two years, they will be working within NHS trusts and local authorities, doing uh, specific placements around all aspects of social work with a focus on adult mental health, but also at the same time, every couple of weeks, having further teaching, uh, and they'll be studying towards a postgraduate diploma in social work in the first year, and then a master's in social work in the second year. So it will be a real combination of the academic learning and also placement, but all the time it will be in, within that group of at least four people. So people will not be let off on their own. They'll be with a group of four people who are doing uh, and learning very similar things to them. Oh, brilliant. I mean, sounds like you'd get to know and uh, make brilliant friends with those four people if you're over the course of the two years. That's absolutely right. And and one of the, the interesting aspects of mental health social work is mental health trusts are established in, in a way that's integrated care. So social workers don't simply work with other social workers. They work with psychologists, they work with psychiatrists, occupational therapists, nurses, all other disciplines within the, the mental health trust team. So a key aspect of these participants' roles will be to interrelate, to interact, and to influence those other professionals within their team. And this is one of the many things that makes it a really interesting, unusual program that rather than simply working day to day with people doing very similar things to them, or they do that as well, they'll also be working with people doing quite different things to them within a medical sphere, within other aspects of mental health. And from the point of view of the service users, from the point of view of the people who benefit from our social workers, it's how those different professionals interrelate for their benefit that's the really important part. So you talked about different placements then. Would they be geographically dispersed or would the placements all be within one, one region? So they'll, they'll be within one trust or local authority area. So if somebody was working on the local authority in London, 
all their different placements would, would, would be within that borough or geographical region. So it might be different physical locations, but within a, you know, within a specific limited geographical area. So over the whole two years, they'll be assigned to that one particular area. So uh, although many of our, our participants may move to undertake this role initially, they may move, be moving from different parts of the country to start their role, over the two years, they'll be based within the same geographical area, although doing a series of placements within that area. And the geographical spread, do you have um, uh, applicants uh, all over the, or will you have applicants all over the country? We'll have them in several different key regions. So the regions we'll be working in are across London, uh, the southeast of England, east and west Midlands, Yorkshire, and the northeast of England. So all our participants will be one of those specific geographical areas. One of our ambitions, inevitably, as with any new organization, is we want to see how effective we can be with the idea that down the line we can increase our geographical reach. But those are the geographical areas we're working in our first cohort to start July 2016. So in terms of the work that um, the graduates will be doing in mental health, do they get much choice in terms of the specific aspects of mental health? Or is it for the first two years they'll get a broad experience across, um, across a whole different uh, range? The idea that is that all our participants will get a broad understanding of social work generally. So although there's clearly a focus on adult mental health, our participants will do placements in a contrasting learning environment as well. So they'll also experience other areas of social work because the qualification that they come out with at the end of the two years is in social work generally. Over the, over the period of time, they'll be working under what we call a consultant social worker who's an established practicing uh, qualified social worker who will be supervising them and assisting them through the various placements. So that group of four that I've mentioned that are assigned to a particular trust all the time they'll be working uh, in that first year under a consultant social worker, part of whose role will be to support them, assist them, give them the guidance they need for what is obviously a very difficult and for many people will be a very different role to what they've done before, but also part of their role is to ensure that they get a broad understanding of the different fields that they may end up working in. So seeing different aspects and different elements of people with different areas of mental ill health, but also all the different parts of the process. So seeing people at home, uh, people within um, hospital, seeing people within the court environment, within the police sector and so forth. So the aim is really to ensure that our participants get a very broad understanding and direct experience of the different areas of social work that exist. Wow. And in terms of candidate skills, um, you mentioned uh, a couple of them. What are the core skills that you're looking for from applicants? Well, we, as I mentioned, are not looking for um, a specific degree background. So we don't regard that in itself as inherently important. But what we are looking for is a range of attributes, as we call them, or competencies, as other people call them, that we think are vital to undertaking the role of a mental health social worker. So what we're going to be assessing people all the way through the process, so from the initial screening stage, uh, the assessment stage, and so forth, what we're really looking for is a series of attributes that people can, that, that people can demonstrate that match that will match what the job will involve so they may have got these attributes from a number of different places they may have got them from jobs they've done before from their studies from other experiences they've had but there are particular attributes that we're looking to to test uh, to, that we sh sh feel will match their suitability for the role and uh, what are those uh, those key attributes so there's a range of them the most important one and one that we talk a lot about throughout the whole of our uh, literature on our program is leadership. What we're looking for is people who uh, have the ability and have demonstrated in the past that they can be leaders, that they have the ability to uh, influence others, to work with people to achieve better outcomes. We want the graduates of our program not simply to thrive in the two months they're on Think Ahead, but to go on to other jobs within mental health, within social work, within the social care sector more generally, that will enable them to lead others to, to, to develop the kind of course of the sector. So leadership is, is, is possibly the most crucial one. It's one we're looking to really shine up from our applicants. Are they able to influence and lead others? The other attributes we're looking for are around other areas you might expect. So one of them is around communication. As I mentioned earlier, the importance of that interrelation with those other people within the mental health trust team. So can they uh, speak to and negotiate with psychologists and psychiatrists and doctors, how are they on paper in terms of putting their ideas across and how are they in terms of influencing and negotiating. So that communication side of things is crucial. Linked to that is their ability to build relationships. 
So there's no doubt at all that some people who work within, who, who apply for, for graduate jobs have got great abilities to uh, lead others and communicate with others, but maybe not to build relationships over time. What we're looking for is a group and a cohort of people who can not only communicate with people the first time they meet them, but very quickly build a very strong relationship with them. So we're looking for people who can build relationships with the uh, clients, with the people they're working with over time. So th those are three of the most important ones. We're looking for other things as well. So we're looking for our participants to show leadership, to show, um, to show uh, communication skills, to, to show uh, relationship building as well. We're also looking for adaptability. So most people have a, some idea of social work that it involves dealing with people in a series of often difficult, challenging situations. We're looking for people who can go into a scenario which they may know very little about, where unpredictable things may happen, and we're really looking for them to very quickly come to the fore and demonstrate how they can, how they can impress and how they can win people around. So we regard that as absolutely crucial, that they can very quickly demonstrate how they can uh, win people over. So that adaptability is also absolutely crucial, that they need to be able to um, rapidly move from a new situation to winning people over. So th those are some of the main attributes we're looking for. There are others as well, which are all on the Think Ahead website, but I think those are some of the crucial ones that people need to be aware of. And how important is it uh, that people have a previous experience in either mental health or, or social work? Well, we don't require it as compulsory that people have that. So what we're looking for is that people have done things in their lives that they can demonstrate through their application their assessment, that demonstrate their ability to meet those attributes, so how much they lead people, their communication skills, relationship building skills. So they don't need to have been uh, within a social work team before. They don't need to have worked in mental health specifically. But if they haven't done those things, they need to demonstrate how they can meet those attributes through other things. So it might be through what they've studied. It might be through volunteering or counseling work. It might be through other jobs that they've done that demonstrate some of those skills. But they don't, and this is unusual perhaps for roots into social work, they don't need to have, as a matter of course, uh, had a specific social work placement before. So moving on then to the application process itself, what does the, you mentioned the process is open at the moment, what does the application process look like? So the application form is online uh, at our website thinkahead.org and we have a series of questions there where we really try and get a sense of what people's suitability is for our placement. Um, we're hoping this will be a very popular scheme, we're having lots of people apply and so what we're hoping is, is that lots and lots of the people who apply um, have got the skills that we're looking for. So I've mentioned already uh, leadership, relationship building, communication, adaptability. We're also looking for their motivation. So one of the early questions on the application form is, what is your interest in this program? Why do you want to get involved? So we're looking for people who not only are interested in social work and mental health, but also think ahead to very specific approach. Um, this fast track approach, this working within a NHS trust or local authority from very early on and combining academic learning with uh, placement experience. We're looking for people who can solve problems uh, and we're looking for people who have self-awareness, can take critical feedback and so forth. So the questions on the application form directly ask aspects of people's experience and lives and outlook that relate to those um, seven attributes I've mentioned of leadership, motivation, adaptability, relationship building, communication, problem solving, self-awareness. There are other questions on there around uh, referees and people's contact information, but the, the core of it is questions around those seven attributes. And then we also have an optional video element where people can upload a two-minute uh, video of them talking about why they want to be involved in Think Ahead. So for people who want to supplement their application, their written application, they can upload a video. And we encourage it. It's obviously another way of people demonstrating why they're passionate about undertaking social work. So that's the first stage. It's an application form uh, that's online right now that people can submit and we, people can save it as they go along so they don't have to do it all in one go um, and they can submit it at any time during the application process. So with the uh, video interviews, have you found that most people have been submitting uh, those with their applications? So it's very early days. We've only been open for a couple of weeks. We've found a good proportion so far have already been submitting videos and I, I hope that continues because I think it's just another way of people really demonstrating their passion. Often people's passion can come out uh, on paper, but can often come out as well by people speaking about their experiences. So people have been doing it, and I hope that continues. So with the video, what is it uh, you're looking for apart from, the, apart from that passion? Uh, we're really looking for people to supplement uh, what they've written in their written application around those attributes, so around 
experiences they have, an understanding of what it is we're looking for. Why is it they're choosing to think ahead rather than doing a master's through a traditional university route? Um, why is it that they, um, how have they demonstrated their adaptability in the past? What problems have they solved that have been di difficult for them? Um, what is their evidence of their motivation to become a social worker? Why are they choosing this particular graduate placement rather than some of the many others that are available? So it's really not asking additional information. It's just another forum for people to show those sorts of things. So listeners, top tip for you there, dust down your webcams and uh, make, yourself, uh, make sure that you have a video application as well. So moving on then from the actual online application and the video application, what would be the next stage then? Is it through to an assessment centre? Uh, not quite. The, 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 the section that happens after that is the people who are successful at the initial application stage are then invited to, to undertake a situational judgment test, which is one of these tests where you get a series of questions that are very specific to the job in question, so being a mental health social worker. And there are a series of scenarios that people have to have a look at. And then they take an online test that they can do in their own time that ask them which of these different multiple choice options would you be most or least likely to do. The scenarios that we are asking people about are based on real life experiences that are large network of what we call our professionals network of social workers of experience and also our service users. So we have a, uh, a network of service users and carers and social workers, all of whom advise us on many of the things that we do as an organization, the decisions we make, and they've given some really good feedback to form the basis of those questions. So the second stage of his successful application is to do is you'll then be sent a situational judgment test and uh, asked a series of questions about situations in social work, and you're asked about how you would deal with that situation if you were to come up against it. Any advice with those situational tests apart from to be honest? Well, I think the, the, the key thing is to understand what the role of a social worker is. So obviously, the more knowledge you have of, of understanding what is the role involved, the better. So there's lots of places you can read up and obviously lots of people who potentially you can talk to who've worked as a social worker because the role is much broader than many people think. It is not simply just talking to people who are having difficulties. It's being their advocate. It's being their standard bearer. So when they're having difficulties, it's being the person who can help them get a job, help them get benefits, help them get access to their children, help them through the legal system or court system. Um, it's, it's about understanding the intricacies of the social worker role in conjunction with the doctors and psychiatrists and psychologists and occupational therapists that I mentioned. It's understanding the uh, busyness of the role. Everybody hears all the time that social workers often have lots of different cases to deal with at once. How do you make priority decisions when you've got several different things going on at once? So I think the best preparation people can do is try and get a better understanding of what social workers do, either by talking to people who've done the role, by reading about what they say, and I think that will help you when you're answering those questions. Excellent advice there. Um, then the assessment centre. How um what would that look like? Is that a full day, half day down in London? It's, uh, it's going to be in a couple of different locations uh, across London and Birmingham. There will be, it will be a half a day. There will be a number of different elements to it. Uh, as an organization, we've been to see lots of assessment centers of other organizations in this space, so within the public sector, within the charity sector. And the aim of what we're trying to achieve with our assessment center is firstly to get the very best we can from our people. We're not trying to catch people out. We're really trying to get them to perform at their best. And we're trying to replicate lots of different elements of the role and seeing how people perform in it. So although there are traditional aspects like an interview within the assessment center, um, lots of it is about people doing things and acting in a way um, that they would need to in the role. So we have a series of different tasks that people will undertake with the aim at the end of the assessment, they will have seen different elements of what the social worker role involves. So the people who we then select from that, we can feel hopefully as confident as we possibly can be that we've seen them do the things they'll end up doing when they're on the Think Ahead program. And the people we'll pick will obviously be the ones who have really shown an understanding and um, competence at all those different aspects. And again, have met those attributes I mentioned before, all the communication, relationship building things we spoke of earlier. So what advice would you give to someone to uh, make sure that they stand out uh, during the assessment center? Well, the first thing to be said is it's not inherently competitive, i.e. we won't have uh, a quota. At, it's a group assessment, but it's not the case that only three people from the assessment will go through. The, the idea is that over the course of our assessments, we have a very clear bar, which is this is the standard we require. And therefore, if we have a very high quality assessment, then 
then, then those people will go through. So they're not in competition with each other in a way. Um, it is about getting above the bar in all the attributes that we're talking about. And it is a high bar. We expect this to be high standard, but so it's not competitive in, in maybe the sense that some people might see it. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, as I repeat, we are really looking for people to perform at their best. So it's absolutely crucial that people can come along to the assessment and be themselves. They can be as natural as possible. Um, they can behave as they would do when they're on the job because we're looking for the authenticity of people and we're looking for not only how they perform themselves but also how they interrelate towards others as well. So obviously it's always hard for to say to people, don't be nervous, but obviously we want people to be relaxed because I think people will perform better. And the third thing is, like with any group assessment, that because there are different elements to it, it's important that people understand that although they need to perform well generally and in all the individual bits, because there are various elements to it, people shouldn't feel if they think the interview hasn't gone quite so well, um, but that's it. They, they, there are lots of different ways that you can impress. And also, and I'm sure lots of employers say this, often the people being assessed are not the best judgment of how they've done themselves. So we want people not to kind of give up hope if they think it hasn't gone well to begin with. Uh, actually, there are, firstly, there are lots of places you can show your attributes, and all our attributes are tested at least twice throughout the, uh, the, uh, the assessment. Um, but also, and I've often found this myself, just because you feel that you haven't done a good job, you're not the one assessing. It's the assessors who will make that decision. So it's important not to lose hope because um, you may actually have done better than you, than you realize. No, that's really good advice. And then with the uh, with the scheme, what sort of uh, salary would uh, the graduates be looking at? Uh, so the first thing to say is there aren't tuition fees for this program. So generally for people studying for social work, uh, bachelors or masters, the traditional routes in, um, they'll need to pay tuition fees. So there aren't any tuition fees on this program, which is obviously uh, an unusual aspect of uh, routes into social work. And hopefully that, that will be one of the aspects that makes this an appealing program. Then when people actually start, they will be paid a bursary um, by Think Ahead, and it will be a bursary equivalent to a salary of about £19,000 outside London and about £22,000 inside London. So that's for the first part of the program between July 2016 and then the beginning of September 2017. And then the second year, people will then be employed um, by their local trusts or uh, uh, NHS trusts or local authorities. And that will be a little bit more than that. That will be uh, a taxable salary of around 21,000 outside London uh, and a little bit more inside London. So those are roughly the amounts that people will get. And then obviously at the end of the two years, they are then fully qualified as social workers. And then you would then go on to the social work banding. And a lot of that information is available about the different bandings of social work, social workers once they're qualified. But it then gets you kind of around to the mid 20s, 20,000s on qualification as a social worker. Excellent. And Ivan, unfortunately, time is running away with us. But one final question before we move to our, our weekly questions. Uh, what would you say to someone to convince them who's in two minds about applying to Think Ahead? I think Think Ahead is a unique opportunity for people who want a real personal challenge to really test their skills, to show how their ability to communicate, to build relationships, to lead people, really move those skills along and really make a, uh, a dramatic boost from their own personal point of view. And secondly, a lie to that, the real profound opportunity to impact people's lives. Uh, Think Ahead really tries to do both. It tries to uh, improve people's individual skills and launch them on a career that will then be of great benefit to others and to themselves. But secondly, it's an opportunity over the 26 months of Think Ahead for people to make a very dramatic impact on people's lives. Uh, and most of the social workers I've spoken to have said that that's one of the most appealing parts for them, their real ability to interact with and impact for the better on individuals' lives. That's it. There's not many graduate jobs where you're going to be having such a, as you mentioned, such an impact on the lives of other people. Exactly. So moving now to our quickfire weekly questions, Ivan, what one book would you recommend for our listeners to read? I would really encourage people to read accounts by practicing social workers, which are available in book form, they're available in blogs, and get a real sense of what people who work as social workers talk about the job, what they say and what they do. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend an individual book, but I really encourage people to get first-hand accounts of people who've done this job so you can really get a sense of, is this for me? Will I enjoy doing this? And also, it would be great to be able to refer back to that throughout the application process as one of the reasons why you want to work for Think Ahead. Yes. And what website would you recommend that people visit? 
at Fingerhead, we often use the community care website. That is a, uh, a website that gives you lots of information about what's going on in the social care sector, within social work, within mental health social work. So if you wish to be on top of current events, what's going on in the sector, uh, what are the big issues, what are the, what are the difficulties, what are the challenges, and what are the opportunities, community care website is a good place to start. And I will link to that in the show notes. So you'll be able to find the links to that website at graduatejobpodcast.com slash thinkahead. And finally, Ivan, what one tip would you give our listeners that they can implement today on their job hunt? My number one tip would be to ask yourself the question, why is it that this employer should take me on? What is it about myself that I think lends skills and benefits to the potential employer? Lots of graduates just think about this is what I want to do. Think of it from the point of view of the employer. What skills, what experience, what ideas, uh, what tenacity, what leadership, what adaptability are you going to give that employer? Look at it from their point of view, and it will help to answer a lot of your questions. I love it. That is a brilliant question. And as you mentioned, it's normally just about why they want to join as opposed to the skills that they can bring. Ivan, thank you so much for appearing on the Graduate Job Podcast. Before we finish, what is the best way that people can get in touch with Think Ahead? And apply. The, the best way to get more information about Think Ahead and to apply is through the Think Ahead website, which is thinkahead.org. And as I mentioned, that will be linked to in the show notes. Ivan, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you again to Ivan Wise from Think Ahead. Now, three points I wanted to highlight that stood out for me. The first on the scheme itself, and then two on your application. Now, number one, if you want a practical, hands-on introduction to mental health social work, then stop looking because this is definitely for you. You've got an amazing opportunity to be in the first cohort of what will be a life-changing 26 months. Now, will it push you, challenge you and stretch you? And will it take you out of your comfort zone? It certainly will. It's not going to be easy, but I love the idea that whatever you're going to go through, you're going to go through in a group of four people so you can learn, grow together and make lifelong friends in the process whilst also making a difference on a day-to-day -day basis in the lives of the clients you'll be working with. Now, there aren't many graduate schemes where you can say that. Applications are now open, so don't hang about and get yours in quick. So moving on then onto my second point on the application process and how to stand out. So one aspect that really stood out for me in what Ivan said, and he said it several times, is that you really, really need to know about what the role of the social worker is. Now, this is something which they are going to drill you on at each stage of the process. They only have 100 spaces to fill, so they aren't going to waste them on people who don't know what they're getting themselves into. You need to know exactly what the role entails and what you're going to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Not what you think you're going to be doing or what you hope you're going to be doing, but the nuts and bolts of what a day in the life of a social worker is all about. Now, make sure you speak to existing social workers. Find out about their real-life experiences, challenges, frustrations... Be well read on the subject, be it from newspapers or books, because if you're not, prepare to get knocked back. And the third point is on being prepared generally. Ivan spelt them out, and they are very clearly spelt out on the website, the seven attributes that Think Ahead are looking for. Now you need to first make sure that you know what they are, then secondly, make sure you have at least two decent answers for them. So there is no excuse for not being prepared and having some cracking answers up your sleeve when you get asked them. Because throughout your application, from the initial online application to your video to face-to-face -face interview, make sure you are very explicit in making sure your answers all relate back to one of these seven attributes. And also crucially, make sure you can knock out of the park the question which is coming, why think ahead? Why do you want a 26-month practical programme over a more theoretical master's degree? Why social work anyway? And also, you know, why should they hire you? Why are you suited to the job? You know that these questions are coming, so do your homework and be prepared when they do. So there you go, episode 32 done. Check out graduatejobpodcast.com slash thinkahead for links to everything we've discussed and a full transcript. Please do get in touch with us on Twitter at gradjobpodcast or email me at hello at graduatejobpodcast.com. I love getting your feedback, so let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see more of, people you'd like to see in the show, I really appreciate all your feedback. If you've enjoyed the show, please do leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. As I say every week, it's the best way, other than sharing it with your friends, to show appreciation for the podcast. And it does help massively in the rankings on iTunes. 
I think we're up to over 50 reviews over in the States now. And I think it's about 30 over in the UK. So come on, UK, we're lagging behind. Get those uh, reviews up on iTunes. And if you've not already subscribed via your podcast provider of choice, you need to sort that out. It's the easiest way to get each episode delivered to you for free and to make sure you don't miss a thing. Now do join me next week when I speak to Inga Woodstra as we examine the possibly thorny topic of the role that gender plays in your job search. I hope you enjoyed the episode today, but more importantly, I hope you use it and apply it. See you next week.